Hello everybody here. Welcome to this very special series, The Future of Universities. The colossal campus is bigger, always better. And this evening is a collaboration between the journalistic platform of Delta, sitting over there, there's a Delta Tribune there, and, uh, and uh, Studium Generale. Uh, as we all know, recently the executive board announced a change of direction for the future of TU Delft. The question is no longer about how much our university can handle, but what, is, what this society needs from us uh, and how we can rise to this challenge. And what a society needs, according to the board, is more engineers. So more students need to be educated. And substantially more. Uh, the board quotes a figure of 40,000, possibly across multiple campuses in Rotterdam and The Hague. And of course, this raises a whole lot of questions, and tonight we're going to address some of these questions. Um, should the university, for instance, always respond to societal demands? To how are we going to ensure quality in education and research? And what about the relationship, for, for, in, for instance, with the town of Delft and its participants? And I'm glad to see that some participants are here, I believe. So a very special welcome. Thank you. Um, so we decided to organize a dialogue, but we decided to organize it in a special form, a so-called theoretical or theater dialogue, in which actors, and you can see them there, you already, are you already acting or just, yeah? Okay, good. <laughs> uh, portray different points of view, allowing us better to visualize what the discussion is really about from teachers who see opportunities to, for, to cooperation and growth in multiple campuses, to local residents who fear more disturbance for students, for instance. And in this theater theoretical dialogue, actors respond directly to voices from the audience. So this is an interactive kind of thing. It's, you could say it is, uh, we don't know exactly how things are going tonight. It's spontaneous, and that's the way this other dialogue should be. Um, so we all, in the end, decide how this thing is going to end. And I guess you're looking now at this, this strange field here. We're going to explain that later on. Uh, but first, before I give the floor to the directors, I want to give a special very welcome uh, to our expert panel, because we also invited a panel. You see them there. So that's the Delta Tribune. Here's the, the panel Tribune. And a very special welcome to, from right to left, Remco Breuker, Professor of Korean Studies at Leiden University, but we especially invited him because he is affiliated with Won and Axi. I don't know if there's a translation for that one, but it's an organization which is committed to the university and its future. And he's also co-author of the pamphlet 40 Propositions on Science, 40 Stellingen over the Wetenschap in uh, Dutch. Then, to the right is Claudio Werke, Associate Professor in Economics of Technology and innovation at the Department of Technology Policy and Management at TU Delft. And she's an expert on regional innovative ecosystems, particularly studying the role of academics at University of Technology within those systems. Well, that's a mouthful. I hope you could, uh, could follow this one. Then Martin is sitting, one is there, chairman of the Central Students Council. And one of his proposition is providing more in the future should not come an expense of student welfare, just to give you some words. And there, next to him, is Julian, 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 Ju Julian in English, Julian Gommers. Uh, he lives in the city of Delft, having graduated and now working full-time as a software engineer, first-hand experience of what it is like to live in a city in which the university has such a dominant presence. And then, the, uh, the, 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 you, you can say the, the, the art director of this night, uh, Frank Kupper, Frank Kupper, Frank Kupper, a stage director and actor, researcher at the VU Athena Institute and designer of this theoretical dialogue. So come, please come here. And yes. Just tell us what we are going to do. And I wish you all a very pleasant evening. Okay, thank you, Leon. Um, yeah, I am a researcher and a facilitator and performer uh, at the Vrije Universiteit VU in Amsterdam. I am involved in the dialogue about science in society. And I founded uh, my theater company because I wanted to free our imagination in how we engage in debates and dialogues together. Because you know that probably from experience that if you 
if you uh, are participating in a debate, you have all these ideas and thoughts in your mind, but that's also where they often stay. And what we are trying to do here is to put these thoughts out of our minds on the floor, play with them, interact with them, in order to get a more broad and deep conversation uh, going. I've been doing that for quite a while, together with my uh, friends and actors, Maaike, Bartelijn and Mark. Uh, so together we uh, design uh, these dialogues and uh, play them out in front of nice people like you. So um, how are we going to work? We have well, input from our expert panel. We uh, have uh, scenes that are about issues that are related to these expansion plans. Uh, we want to hear your thoughts and we experiment with these uh, ideas on stage together with you. If you have something to say, make sure you get my attention and uh, I'll allow you to influence what happens uh, here. But I will also just ask you for your opinion right away. So, I think we can uh, start. Sorry? Oh. There's also a drawer here. That's the one thing I would ah. uh, like to add. Yeah. Uh, drawer was sitting right uh, behind Mark van Heiste. Uh, he's going to d make drawings uh, about the situation. And afterwards, you're going to, to give a little presentation <laughs> about uh, the drawings itself. And of course, Remco, you are here for, uh, for an opening statement. So that's uh, Leon, we first have a ah, few okay, answers. Sorry. Yeah. So okay. Don't worry, I'll, uh, I'll go. It's improvisation already. Yeah. <laughs> so, because we start with you, and we start uh, with your first ideas about what a university is about and what a university should do. Um, and therefore, we prepared four statements about the nature and task of a university. And these statements are written in a color that corresponds to the colors here. And what I would like you to do is to move uh, forward towards uh, these uh, quadrants here. And the benefit of that is that you can also read the statements better. So um, move forward and think which of these statements suits your view the most. <laughs> so if you think a university is foremost a place for the free creation of knowledge, you go stand in this green quadrant. If you think that a smaller university provides a more personal, livable climate, uh, and of course they are not exclusive, but one of them is probably closer to how you think. Uh, you stand here, Pay note that these are both uh, Small about small scale. If you think that growth is essential for universities' competitiveness and opportunities, then you stand here, so that is growth, expansion. And if you think it's the task of the university to fulfill the needs of society, you stand in the blue quadrant, that is also growth and uh, expansion. So I am very curious what your first uh, thoughts are. And I would like to invite you to come over here and uh, show that by voting with your feet. <coughs> oh, okay. Okay, sometimes Sometimes uh, people that really see universities as a free place for academics are accused of being romantic and nostalgic. So there are a lot of romantic people here. <laughs> That's great. Um, and there's also an empty quadrant here. Um, but first, uh, let me ask uh, you, why are you, sir, in this uh, quadrant? Is the task of universities to fulfill the needs of society? Yeah. I suppose I think it's the blue one. Uh, it is the, the task of the yeah. university to fulfill. Eh? Oh, sorry, my fault. The wrong one. The wrong one. I couldn't see the colors anymore. Yeah, but then we move to smaller university provides a more personal, livable work 
climate. No, not Why are you here? No, no. I'm not for the smaller university. Dan sta je in het verkeerde vak. Oké. Okay. Ja? Zo. So. We just move over here. <laughs> It's the task of a university to fulfill the needs of society. Yes. Explain. The, the university is, is the part of the, of, the, of the society and you have to use the knowledge and the, and the experience in the university for the for the social uh, experience for the social development okay so for the social development of society this knowledge is needed and that's the role of a university um, why are you here i will hold hold the microphone okay uh but basically because uh, i'm a phd i'm a researcher and i think that like f first independency is the most important thing and free because like the knowledge should be accessible for everyone. So I stand uh, for this position. Yeah. Okay, so you are living the free and independent creation of knowledge. Um, and here, you sir. I live in Delft and I think almost 28,000 students are the limit for the inhabitants of Delft. We have 100,000 inhabitants and one of four is a student. And we don't want 40,000 students in Delft. Yeah. So for you, a smaller university is not only a better climate for the students, but also for the other people that are living in Delft. Okay, very clear. No one here. No one here? Okay, let's... To, to grow. You have to grow, otherwise you won't exist in, a, in, a, in the future. I think, why are you standing there? You just, just people like, I, f I feel uh, quite a distance. Why? We have to grow. We have to grow into society, make bigger, bigger, bigger. Do yeah. Do Sorry? Do you live in Delft? Do you live in Delft? I like uh, Delft very much. No, do yes. you live in Delft? Uh, no, no, I don't. No. So no. Okay, why? Okay. Why? Why? Because I live in Delft, and I think Delft right now is in is this uh, tilting position. There's too much pressure on the, on the city uh, because of students, and you cannot ignore that. Yeah, you just can't. Yeah, but the world is so growing. So it's really nice that you say that um, they should grow, but how you how you feel about the people who live here? I, I like people a lot, so I, no, I no, want no, to no, integrate. No, and the question yes. is, how do you think about the people who live in this city? How do you think we cope with all these students? Yeah, yeah, there are some problems to solve. Yes, some problems to solve. Well, think, you know, yes. I'm also, um, uh, I also think we should grow, and I think we can do with both. We can also uh, put, uh, let the students live in another place. So maybe the, the Delft city doesn't have to suffer too much on the growth of our uh, university, and also it can, you can maybe even. Um, um, uh, it can enrich you and even maybe even do a lot of good things for the economy if there are more students in Delft. In Delft, yeah. I don't feel really enriched by waking up five times a night. Sorry. No. <laughs> no. And I, uh, I have children myself. They study as well. But they are not prepared to uh, to move to another city because Delft is very is a very nice city, not only for students but also for <coughs> us. Uh, so there is, I agree, there is a problem to solve. Yes, I, I feel what you mean. But if I stand in this uh, squa square, I'm I just think of all the international opportunities for the university, and maybe I don't think so much about uh, you. So it's very good that you uh, yeah. say those things. Do you live in Delft? No, personally okay. I don't. No. So this is, uh, yeah. I think, one of the basic questions for tonight. Do you live in Delft <laughs> or not? I would like to ask you to please go <laughs> back to your seats. We will take a picture <laughs> of this uh, division. <coughs> so it's good to see that we, uh, that, that you have shown where you stand at the beginning of this dialogue and also that we immediately uh, got into the heart of the matter, expansion for what and for whom. Um, I would now like to uh, go further to uh, paint the picture of uh, the 
expansion plans, the growth scenario that is envisioned by uh, this university. Um, so uh, the actors will show you this picture and then I will get back to you to ask you uh, yeah, what the important elements in this picture are for you. Yeah. Yeah. What's the truth here? I would suggest that we. Uh, yeah. They want to decrease. Okay. So my. Um, So you are confused, but I'm, I'm not going to give the, the uh, microphone to everybody. That takes too much time. But I will, I will rephrase what you're saying. You say you are confused. Is it about decrease or increase? Uh, we are here today exploring the potential of uh, expansion, of growth, and what we think of that, how we look at that, and whether you, are you see opportunities in that or whether you see uh, concerns. So what the so the truth is not what we are talking about now. We are talking about about your view and also the views of uh, other people here. And uh, yeah, I explain when I was in that quarter, I just was representing this quarter, but I could also stand here and say Delft is too small. It's impossible to expand. Yeah. So we are exploring all these perspectives. Okay. So we are not promoting any scenario, but we want to find out about what is important to you. So, um, so we first now start with painting the picture of uh, one scenario, the uh, scenario that the University of uh, Delft wants to expand from 28 to 40,000 uh, students, as it has been uh, published on uh, the Delta University uh, paper website. So um, I would like to invite you to paint this picture for us, the future of Delft with 40,000 students. I see villages for students on the borders of Delft. And they're very cozy and they like it a lot. And the people in Delft, they look at the villages and they see, oh, that's fine, no nuisance in our city. Oh look, there's the first year student, John. He's just got taking the stairs to the second floor where he has a small apartment in his student house. Oh, I see they are throwing a party tonight, but the whole building is invited because everybody, well, most people like to party. So that's great. They can have their own party in their own space. Uh, but I also see in the center of Delft, there is a student living in the center and uh, he's giving a party tonight. So there's a lot of nuisance for the neighborhood over there because there are so many students and not everybody can uh, live on the campus. So they are in the village also. Oh, I also see a student. He is just taking the public transport there from The Hague to Delft. And there's... Oh, one from Rotterdam also. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, she's taking the electric bike. Oh, oh that's quite. Sp oh, sport. and there, there's Carla. She's she's working online from all the way from Maastricht. Oh, but she's the teacher, right? She's the teacher. Yeah, yeah. she is. Blended. She's working blended. She's oh, working that's blended. Oh, great. Yeah, there are some teachers who really love it, so can they can work f from home. But there are also teachers who really miss the contact with the students and are feeling a bit alone in their room at home. And I see Hank. He's working. He rather likes working analog, and he works with a group of students live in Delft. And I see a lot of engineers ready for society to help with all the problems and uh, finding new solutions on all the uh, problems that are there. I would like to invite you for uh, 30 seconds to think by yourself in silence what are from this picture that is uh, painted important elements for you. 
And these can be things that you recognize as an opportunity, but also things that you recognize as a concern. So this was a future scenario. And now I want, to, uh, I want to ask you, what are the things that you recognize as important to you? So for 30 seconds, think about that yourself, and then I will be back. The next step that I want to take you through is that you discuss the opportunities and co concerns that you've talked about with your neighbor for two minutes. So um, please share and find, find a similarity or difference between <coughs> your views. Yes, thank you. The next... Can I have your attention, please? The next step, the next step in our uh, conversation is that we are going to share uh, your first thoughts uh, together with everyone. And uh, your conversations, of course, are unfinished. Don't worry, because we will come back to all these uh, items uh, throughout uh, the dialogue. Uh, I'm looking for a few uh, voices that I haven't heard yet, starting here. Okay. Um, yeah, I will hold it. Uh, hi, thank you. Uh, we were discussing actually what our role here is and why we are here. Um, I graduating on this topic at the TU Delft, actually the study place of the future. And what we saw here was that there is a, a friction between inhabitants of TU Delft and the students and how they should live together and how the interaction is. But I think that's not only the problem for the housing, but also the um, student academic relation with teachers. So, yeah, that, w that we were this. Yeah, so there's a friction not only between students and local residents, but also between students and teachers, yeah. researchers. Yeah. And what is this second friction about? We haven't heard about so much until now. Uh, we were actually discussing this, like um, how big should the university grow to also have the uh, contact that you need with your fellow students and your academic teachers, because otherwise I could follow a MOOC from Harvard or MIT yeah. or by... So yeah. what's the difference between following a MOOC from Harvard or this online lecture from that woman in Maastricht over there? Okay, thank you. You have uh, something to share? Yes, hi. Um, I think for me the most concerning um, dialogue was about uh, that we will have more engineers to solve more problems. So for me, is it feels like the goal of having more engineers is overshadowing the means of achieving it. Uh, in a sense that we will have, will we have better engineers, or we will just have more engineers? Yeah, I would say more engineers is always better. No, for me, it <laughs> means that no? if there isn't enough resources for engineers to actually grow into a critical thinker and actually contribute to the society's <laughs> needs. Um, there is no point in just increasing the numbers without increasing also the resources per student. Okay, you say uh, more engineers is not always better. Engineers should all be also be critical thinkers that uh, are able to relate to society's needs. Um, what about you here? What uh, did you talk about? I will uh, hold oh, on. yeah. Uh, actually, I'm an exchange student here, so I don't know how the inhabitants of that usually live it with students. Uh, I didn't think about the uh, problem of parties, but we discussed before about how online or uh, online le lecture should be a possibility, but not be something compulsory that we are obliged to attend. I think everyone should have the opportunity to be in the class, have yeah. enough space to... What's the advantage of uh, in-classroom education? I mean, you, you have uh, contact with your fellowship students or with the professor, you can go there yeah. and you have a direct contact with them. And you think expansion is not possible without online education? 
uh, I think expansion is possible, but also that it shouldn't be go in the way that you have to oblige students to follow online lectures. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah? Does this work? Yeah. One of our panel members. No, what we discussed is kind of the same thing that we don't, or at least I don't see that much uh, value in 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 uh, having students follow online uh, lectures and online education because we, what we have learned from I think the whole COVID period is that students get lonely when they have to follow their education from their own room, or they don't have the opportunity to. Uh, go to lecturers and ask them questions on a personal level and also get to know stuff from the TU Delft on a personal level and it's just the, the, the personal connection that you feel to the university that comes through people and not through a computer screen. Yeah, so the pers personal connection comes through people, not through a computer screen. Thank you. Um, so you say, I want critical thinkers. Well, at least I think we have them in the audience, but because these are all concerns, are there also opportunities that people see? Yeah, Claudia, you are a teacher at this uh, university. It was working. <laughs> yeah. So I think that uh, the opportunity is, of course, to think from our technological development. I mean, uh, we have experience now with online teaching, and I can completely understand that certainly bachelor students and to some degree Master students uh, would like to have the personal contact, but when I think about growth, I also think about lifelong learning, and I think about our children, because I'm convinced that they will have, and the students uh, of today, that they will have to work until they are 80, and that means basically what? that they will have to live uh, and work and learn their almost whole life through. And that means that the university should also grow in um, giving some attention to this lifelong learning processes. And that, from my perspective, if we do it right, can also be done to a huge extent online with some network events. Yeah. Okay. So online education is also an opportunity for this perspective of online uh, of lifelong learning. Uh, thank you. So I think it's time uh, to ask uh, Remco uh, Breuker uh, to join us uh, here for a uh, position uh, statement. We have discussed uh, several issues now. Uh, we've talked a lot about online and hybrid education, also personal attention and well-being. We will come back to that issue uh, later. We've also discussed housing and uh, the, the nuisance disturbance uh, for other inhabitants of the city of Delft, we will also come back to that issue later. But first, we want to explore the issue of the, the, the growth scenario versus the academic institution, uh, the free place of knowledge. Uh, Remco. Thank you. Um, thank you um, to, to for the opportunity. Um, I have to one word of warning before I start. Um, whatever I'm going to tell you now, I've been, I've been labeled um, hopelessly nostalgic and um, something else, romantic and old-fashioned, I think. So with that, um, with that caveat, let me, let me tell you a few things about how I see the university. Um, I'll have to read part of it. It's a definition. Um, two definitions, very short, and then three very short reflections on those definitions. The first one, the university is a community tasked with independent research, independent education and social outreach based on independently achieved academic slash scientific insights. Then the following um, definition, the duties of the university involve three kinds of knowledge, curiosity driven knowledge and research or blue sky research, innovative and problem solving knowledge and critical knowledge. Now, um, there's much to be said about um, about the growth of the university, the place of the university in, um, in, in the society. I think the way I define it, I'm not the only one who does so, um, independence is the key word there. And I do see a uh, strong tension between growth and independence because if you want to grow, especially if you want to establish more um, campuses outside of your own, of, of Delft, you need money, you need investments. And the relationship between investors and the university may very well compromise your independence. It has happened before. 
Um, take a look at what happened to the China campus of Groningen University, for example. Uh, that was torpedoed precisely because of this problem. That would be my first um, reflection. Um, you may jeopardize the very thing you want to pursue. Then the second one, sorry, my eyes aren't what they used to be. Right, it's this one, is big better? Well, there's part of me that says, yes, big is better. <laughs> um, but <coughs> I'm sorry, there's another part of me that says, no, it isn't. There is, um, of course, there's research, I'm sorry, teaching quality. But more than that, uh, organizations like ours that try to grow, educational institutes that try to grow, usually grow in the wrong region of the university, its center, and not its teaching, not its research, not its outreach, but its policy making, um, its um, quality control mechanisms of supervision, whatever you call it. Um, we, need we need to a certain extent we need it, but we don't need everything. It's a bit like my belly, I'm afraid. I'm trying to get more lean and more muscles. What I end up instead with is a bigger belly. It happens to men of, of middle-aged men like myself. And universities like this are still middle-aged white men. So there is really, um, um, I think, a danger there in trying to grow. You grow in the wrong direction. Thirdly, and then um, I'll stop. What kind of things, what kind of people, what kind of products are we, are universities supposed to supply the, the, the society with? And this is an important question because we are being paid by society. Especially, I would say, the students here, because you cost us at least three to four times as much as non-technical majors. So it's, it's a very real question. Um, we, do we need more engineers? Probably. Um, do we need 45,000 engineers? Well, if I don't know, to be honest, um, because the problem is there, I would say, if you have a hammer, everything you see will look, start to look like a nail. Um, that's one problem. And the other problem I would see, again, it has to do with research and, um, and the, um, um, the kinds of knowledge you produce. As I read the, the expansion plans of this university, and in that sense, our university is very much similar. Um, they are responding to social needs, but I wonder whether the university is the best place to do so. To be honest, I think we should take a look at um, the um, polytechnics, HBO, at hoger, wetens, hoger beroepsonderwijs. Practical um, and job-oriented um, engineers is probably what we need instead of academic engineers. And if that's what this university is producing, then they're doing something wrong. Like my own university is not a, a Delft problem. It's a, it's a much bigger problem. So um, my proposal would be to cut up most universities in the Netherlands, including Delft, including Leiden, my own university, make them much smaller, um, and go back to the basics, instead of trying to just do everything and be this cookie monster, really. That's basically, I think, what... what um, yeah, I'll end on those okay. memorable words. Don't be a cookie monster. Don't be a cookie monster. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Remco Breuker. <coughs> Can I have uh, the actor that's going to portray the academic life uh, here? Yeah. yeah. Middle-aged white man. Middle Very good. <laughs> um, so Remco, uh, let's, uh, let's build up this uh, setting here. Uh, Mark is going to play uh, a scientist from the uh, maybe romantic, nostalgic era of academic knowledge creation. Um, so what is that? What can you give us some features? What is that? What is that? Uh, yeah, what is that scientist like, or what is that environment uh, like? Well, I, I can only speak for the non-scientist, I guess, as a humanity scholar. But yeah, yeah, work. It's always work. It's always work. work. Always work. Always teaching. Sometimes oh. research. Okay. Lots a lot of, of teaching. Lots a lot of, of teaching, teaching and yeah. work. And can you? What are? What is important to to cherish or to uh, protect for in this academic? Uh, environment. You your already mentioned independence. Yeah, your independence, your relationship with your students, your relationship with your colleagues, um, the ability to have fun. Independence, it, I think. Rela personal yeah. relations and fun. And uh, you have a suggestion. Uh, I will rephrase. Just talk to me. Yeah. Something totally different. Okay, so what does an uh, engineer in an academic environment look like, according to you? An engineer at a technical yeah, university. Yeah, at a technical university. Is an inventor. So somebody who makes something that is a value. 
OK? Researchers, scientists, do discoveries. Discoveries, they discover. So engineers invent something that is not there yet. Scientists discover. A rocket. They come to the moon. Things like that. Yeah. A society didn't need rockets. A society didn't need radios. They didn't need cell phones. Society didn't need radios or rockets or cell phones. Yeah. That's a totally different person. So a stupid engineer builds things that society does not need, but wakes up wakes up a need. The need comes. If you see an aircraft, first you say I'm afraid of it, everybody will die. But at some point yeah. you say it's a convenient way to go. Okay, it. very clear. We will take the point of invention uh with us. Yeah. Uh and then there's also a U two that mm -hmm. are um so if you can go a little bit here, Over there. Uh, can we you two are in. You are still in the in the picture that we painted about the uh, expansion, uh, and we focus on how engineers uh, do their work. And we already uh, saw two things. One is that uh, they are very much focused on solving societal issues. Uh, that's uh, one of the main justifications and drivers for the, this expansion uh, scenario. We need engineers to solve society's problems. Um, and uh, Remco, one of the critical points you would like to uh, address here, what is a risk in this, in this environment? In what sense? Yeah, so they are, they are focused on solving society's needs. Right. You mentioned they might risk their independence right. and they might yeah. also grow too much uh, in the wrong direction. Okay, yeah. So more layers. No, yeah. no, it's, uh, if it's about independence, it's about being able to do the research or to make the inventions you think that you need to do yeah. without being compromised by outside pressure. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Something so like um, let's have a look uh, at how these uh, situations evolve uh, and contrast and compare. Okay. As, as an engineer and a university, I like to invent, and they call it sometimes uh, a, an academic bubble. But I need it. I need independency because my best thoughts are on the toilet when I'm alone. But to get those thoughts, I need students who ask me questions. I need my colleagues who are clever, who are experts, who are at home in knowledge. You Technical are at knowledge. home in knowledge. And uh, I really mm. need you because my political party made a promise that we will have a total uh, uh, sustainable energy transition in, in seven years. Mm -hmm. And we really need you to make more efficient wind energy. Can you help us with that, please? Uh, well, of course, I'd like to think with you in this issue because, well, I'm an expert, of course, in this uh, area. Uh, but then, uh, well, I need a lot of money to do it. So, well, we have a lot of money and we can give it to you. I mean, we, we were discussing which university should we uh, go to. And well, then we well of course, Delft is one of the best universities in the world in this uh, subject. And so it is the best university in the world because it's independent. Because it's not depending on big money. It's <coughs> not depending on growth. It's depending on independency. But I, I, would like to, I would like to state out that, of course, when I'm taking the money, I will stay independent. I find that very important. So I will need, uh, you know, the freedom to really invent what's necessary. Well, um, maybe we can uh, find a solution for that because, of course, y I mean, you're the expert. So the way you are doing your research and develop your inventions is totally that's, that is your speciality. But I think it's nice if we can make some agreements on, uh, you know, the results of your uh, research. Uh, okay, Would that be so, so and, and which time lapse are you thinking? Well, uh, I when have do I have to deliver something? Uh, the faster you are, the more money you There can are give a lot you. of influences out of in society that wants things that's maybe politic, that's maybe not necessary, that's maybe not good. I don't say that my inventions will be good, 
Uh, no, I don't. I don't say but that we have to go to you. I mean, we could go to MIT, Oh, no, no, but you're really at a nice place and here. I, I think this is the best place for you to go. And yes. I can assure you that we have a lot of great possibilities to, you know, really develop something uh, on this subject. Yeah, in, our in our university, we have the best critics on ourselves. We always <coughs> ask ourselves, is this right? Is this good science? Is this really the way you invent things on the right This way. really must be good science because you have so many international students coming mm -hmm. to your, I mean, yes. the south of the we Netherlands. We all teach them to be like really critical thinkers. We think that's very important. Yes, yeah. it is very important. So thank you. Claudia, you are also a, um, <coughs> a uh, teacher and researcher. Oh, you have <coughs> a microphone over yes. there. So um, yes. which environment is more attractive so. to you? Can you have this one or that one? <laughs> well, certainly the green one, because uh, it feels much more comfortable to me to uh, be independent of uh, <laughs> having to define uh, the results by someone in advance. I actually worked uh, for a bank, for a, a research thang uh, tank of a bank, yeah. and there this was a bit like that, and that was for me the reason to choose for, for the university, because uh, doing research for me is something where I always have the feeling I can find whatever answer I find yeah. and will. As have the answer that I find, and of course that is always contestable, <coughs> meaning <coughs> that people can say this is not uh, what we think and we debate uh, on your assumptions and so on, but yeah. at least it's something where I really stand for. Yeah. So here you have the independence and the time to find your own answers that can then be later be contested uh, by other uh, engineers or researchers. Um, do we have the time for that? Because I'm sure we have, we have the time. Because we have issues. I'm sure we have the time. Like, um, uh, th there is <coughs> yeah. Because if you look into the historical development of technology, you see that often you have very basic research results that lie or sit there for ages and then someone combines them with other ideas and with other problems and then you have a huge breakthrough and a very good solution. I'm not saying that this is not uh, worth exploring, but you still should yeah. look into the questions of independence. Okay, so let's, uh, can you come here? Let's, let's try to explore how uh, independence, uh, whether and how independence can be uh, safeguarded here. So what, do, what, what does this, this relation between uh, the funder and the engineer need to protect this, this independence that is important to us? Does anybody have an idea? Well, al I already told her that uh, I... Yeah, 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 you, you want uh, independence, independence is yes, very important yes. to you. But still, uh, we have the idea that maybe this arrangement is not going to help you wi with that enough. So, um, she needs help to become more independent. <coughs> what how would you like to redesign this, uh, this situation? I see the gentleman over there in white has some ideas. Uh, risk taking. Risk So, uh, okay, risk taking. Mm -hmm. Now let's let's see. Well, what you know, I mean, <coughs> we we can give you a lot of money. You know, it's a lot of money. So you have a lot of opportunities opportunities to develop it. But uh, actually, we can't afford uh, another good result. So uh, I would appreciate it if you, you know, wouldn't take. No, too no but the only thing it works is if I can take risks. I mean, if I invent something <coughs> new, then first of all, I have to invent like a hundred times how it's not being invented, you know? A so hundred times? Yeah, for example. So that's how it works. I have to fail to make a success. So what if I give you money uh, for, uh, if I, uh, for small mistakes, but not for big mistakes? Is that mm -hmm. maybe possible? Uh, but is this but working? <laughs> yeah, is this working? Yeah, you see this happening? Someone has to commit to give you money while you are to fund you while you take risk. Yeah. Yeah. 
So you don't need incremental, yeah. but disruptive innovation. Okay. And is that possible in this in this expanded university that is yeah, maybe dependent more on these kind of relations? Yeah. So who's the bias here is that they're all looking on economical growth and how we have to be extending number of students in basic cities. We can also look at internal values. How can we increase our quality? That's also good in relation with students. So that is also taking risks in other ways. Taking risks and not in increasing in numbers? Okay, so then uh, mm. let's give the funder a little bit of rest and uh, get a, a university board uh, member here that uh, has, had this, uh, has looked at this uh, TED talk <coughs> about uh, disruptive innovation <coughs> and uh, new ideas about uh, taking more risks and also making sure that her research is more critical. I think I heard a TED talk of a, a man in, in a white shirt. It was great okay, with, okay. with white hair. He oh has I hair. I heard about yeah, him. Yeah. yeah, he's great. And um, I think we have to increase to make the university smaller. Yes. We yeah. have to more attention for the students. We have to get more less teachers, students. Less students. Yeah, maybe if more uh, teachers. I mean, yes. More researchers. Yeah. That is where that's taking. I'm so I'm we're taking only going to educate yes. like a few a really, few. really good engineers. Yeah, or maybe when you, I, th I would say, take some risk. Also, students, what you think? Mwah, also, give some extra attention. So maybe give me numbers. H how many students would you like? Uh, uh, is best? What's let's cut in half. Fourteen thousand uh, students for the next year. So, just okay. take some risk. And, and you think that then More we attention. get better results if we yeah. get less students? Yes, yes. Because the students I are getting more I see they are happy uh, already. So you, <coughs> have yeah. you, you want Is to stay working? or to go? Yeah. Exaggerating. But this so this is not really the critical mindset that you were looking for. <coughs> <coughs> so what would you like to see? Not cutting it in half, less drastic increase. Okay, and so more so attention so maybe we to improving. Just select more the students. So not not everybody can come here to follow a uh, oh to study a here. Critical but selection. only no, no really risk. the upper class, the really intelligent students can oh. come to Delft. Okay. And that's gonna be in the new Delft mindset. Like the yeah. really brilliant students ah, are coming here. Okay, great. Yeah, that's a good idea. Oh yeah. let's uh, let's hear from Martin our uh, Student um, representative? Yeah, I don't really agree. I mean, cutting in half is kind of a drastic measure, in my opinion. I feel like with 25,000 students in Delft, we can probably make it. Um, it's kind of uh, you, you, you. You talked about 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 having a really high uh, version standard. of s selection, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. really high standard. Yeah, uh, but we also want everyone to have the opportunity to come to study here. I mean, that's the case in most of the uh, of this country. Uh, in most of uh, most of the universities of this country, students can just go there. But, but but you know, in art school, it's the same. Not everybody can go to art school. There is a selection, and that's for a reason because then we get better artists. I think we should do the same thing in engineering. I mean, yeah, not everybody I, I is think able I to think have I real think really brilliant ideas. I think everyone who has the uh, right diplomas from their high school, which is the standard we have, should be able to come here uh, at least for their first year. To see if it fits. And, and should we also do that in art school? That's a really good question Thank because you. I feel like it's something different. Everyone can, uh, you know, you know. Well, everybody can engineer. No, no, <laughs> no. I don't agree with that because you know what is what is what is good for you. And also, the art schools they are already really small because there are way less artists than engineers. So there is also way less room for uh, uh, for for teaching new artists than for teaching new engineers. Okay, so you say it's important to safeguard the uh, opportunity to access the university programs, so no elite university. Claudia, you wanted to add something? 
I think that uh, if you do it like that, you create really an elite. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not in favor of that either, because uh, you see students develop in time, and some students develop very early in their beginning of 20s, and some need a bit more time. So I would really appreciate if we give them that kind of time. OK, so um, we, we, are now we moved from uh, <coughs> yeah, more risk taking and, 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 and trying to become better rather than bigger uh, yeah, to an elite university that we don't want. Um, so how? So there is clearly this idea that a, a better university is necessary to answer to the, the, the challenges that we face in our world, uh, not necessarily a bigger university. But then, what about this justification that that that? Uh, so what is what, what is driving the university board to say that that we need this expansion? Yeah. So if we want to, I will, I will rephrase so everybody hears it. If you want to invest more, that's fantastic. But it's not enough, right? More money, more investment, yeah. more quality. That's also growth, but it's not necessarily bigger or more students and more research. <coughs> yeah, and do you think it's like, uh, is the question, is the, the real... Is it's easier to sell and to show that you're doing something, but it can be bigger in numbers in terms of money. Yeah. So bigger numbers are uh, more easy to sell than we need more money. <laughs> yeah. OK. Is it really that driven by marketing? Yeah? Society wants more engineers at the output. You mean gradu after graduation? Yeah. Yeah, so, so uh, and then how, what should, so you say the way that we look at it now is that society wants to have more engineers graduated and not more engineers, students in the beginning. And so how should we look at this? Sorry? More attention for students as a teacher. Yeah? Okay, important point that you <coughs> raise. What is the society that we actually are talking about? Uh, and what? Uh, a question from the society for nurses, for people working as shippers. Uh, what's the question? Uh, what is the society? Yeah, I will come back to that later. Uh, Claudia, you also want to reply to that? Yeah, I want to comment on that because uh, I should say I'm an economist by training, so. I understand a bit about labor market uh, prognosis, although this is not my expertise. But if you look at the labor market prognosis, you see that they usually go about five years in the future or ten if you are lucky. And if you go for ten years, it's already r rather uncertain. And they give you some indications what we might need in terms of nurses, engineers and so on and so forth. And at the same time, we make long-term strategies uh, based on the so-called need of society that we do not really know about, because we do not yeah. know actually how technological change, how political change will cha uh, change also the need for engineers. Yeah, so that, that is one uh, aspect of society. You say that's not really what I'm talking uh, about. I yeah. had a question. This, the question was, yeah. what society are we talking about? <coughs> Dutch society, European or global? Yeah, I think Claudia is, uh, is m actually putting more force behind your question because she's saying that the society that we have in mind is a society that we can yeah, uh, see in five years. But there's another aspect, and that is, are we talking about the Dutch society or about the global society? The problems that we are talking about are problems that yeah, appear at a global scale. But uh, uh, do you live in Delft? Uh, that question is a very local question. So that society is just around here. 
So that is indeed a tension between uh, the, the society in the plans of the university and the society that is dealing with the implications. Julian, you wanted to uh, add something to yeah, that. It's, it's not only a question about what is the, dis the, the, the society, because first of all, we had the question here, why does the university want to grow? But it's also a question for the board. What kind of students would you like to have at the end? Which is exactly the end that you were talking about. Do you want to have en engineers or inventors or people who want to go into the research? Or do you want to have people who are going to work at companies to implement all these new innovative uh, thoughts that have been created? So the question is, do you want to have more innovative thoughts or do you want to have more implications? And the question is, is the university and especially the growth of the university going to create the latter? Okay. Can you also start answering it? <laughs> well, I, belie I believe, and I think it has been put on the table already here, that uh, the university is mainly for research. So educating students to go into ah, research. And invention. And invention. But there is also... Yeah, exactly. So what you're saying is that the university should create engineers and not scientists or researchers. But there is also there are also hogeschoolen, uh, universities of applied sciences. They are training people to become uh, uh, engineers in the working field. And I think this is uh, in in society the place where there is the, the biggest potential of growth, because there can be a lot of thoughts, but when the thoughts cannot be implemented, you have a great issue. And I think it should be more possible to implement the thoughts than to create more thoughts. Okay, um, let's, uh, let's try and uh, put that into uh, an image. So here we have a, uh, an, uh, a technician with a vocational training. And here we have a technician with uh, academic training. So, uh, what is the, 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 the engineering subject that they ha are experienced in? Just give me a uh, subject. Energy transition, Energy transition uh, just to mention uh, something. Um, okay, uh, so and, and what is, uh, wha what is the, the, the contribution of the, f the, 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 the technician with vocational uh, training? What is her contribution to the energy transition? She she knows how to build fuel cells. Okay, yeah. The simple definition, the starting point, is that the academic training can be for someone that can produce knowledge, while the other person is someone that can apply it. Yeah. Yeah. So she is uh, applying knowledge that is produced here. That is developed here, yeah. Okay, so what is uh, her, as an academic, what is her contribution to the energy transition? And can you tell me more about fuel cells? Yeah, so let, let's, uh, so I'm sorry, uh, my question was not uh, clear. Let's stick to the fuel cells. So she applies the knowledge, she makes the fuel cells, builds, and then what, what is her contribution? Yeah, so I, uh, I, I, uh, I found this, I, I had this eureka moment the other day, it was great, I was standing there with my colleague in the lab and we says, said to each other, this is it, you know, we can make, just from the organic stuff, we, we, we can make so much new energy and it's so much easier than, uh, and, 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 and uh, it costs way less energy. So uh, I really want to, want to talk to you about it because I think uh, if I can give you some courses on how to uh, implement this in your, uh, you know, in your science assignments, we can make a big contribution to the energy transition. Um, well, okay, that sounds nice, but uh, you know, I'm in this traineeship at Shell and uh, I have certain targets I have to do, so uh, I'm not sure whether I can really implement your ideas, but uh, I would like to hear from you. Well, maybe I should talk to uh, Shell's leaders then, but uh, oh, they should come around. No, they sent me. 
They send you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you have to do it with me. Okay. But, but I'm, you know, I'm really uh, curious about what you invented. Well, you know, we, we were collaborating because we were thinking about, you know, you can you can make meat just from in the laboratory. You don't need animals anymore to produce meat. And then we thought, hey, w while we are producing meat in the laboratory, we can also use the energy that we create f while developing that meat to uh, light the room. Isn't that great? Okay, uh, Julian, you were saying there, there can be a lot of thoughts, but they also need to be implemented at some time. Is it, how is this going for you? Well, of course, she has a good idea, and, and she's walking against the, the, the fact that it cannot be implemented yet. So then the question can be also, if you already have the thought and you have created the thought, but there are no places to implement it, then you need, well, there was an investor here before. This investor, this one, needs to be the one who creates the money to, to do the research and then also create the potential to implement okay, it. Okay, so we have an investor here. Um, so where does this investor needs, needs to uh, put his focus? As some of you said, we actually need more people that are, have a vocational training, more technicians than engineers. Uh, although there uh, might be the chance of some disruptive innovation that is going to change everything. Um, so wha so what, what, what does, uh, yeah, maybe you can ask them yourself. Where, yeah, I can. where does your money, the money need to go to? Yeah, what does my money need to go to? I want yeah. to invest, yes. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a so bit... So do you want just more incremental innova <laughs> innovation or do you want to save the planet? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, I want to save the planet, yes, please. This is, what I think, yes, what we call like a false like dilemma. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there, there's also... Would like to add uh, yeah, something he to that? Because he really needs help in yes, order to... Yes, you can see me, yeah. I'm, I'm desperate. Because I think you are much closer to the lady on uh, the green side, mm -hmm. so to speak, and you're missing a step. Um, what you are doing here is when you talk to engineers, when do you let go and when are you not really uh, influenced by the money uh, spenders? They would say, we still follow the process up until the, to the prototyping. So she needs first to do some prototyping. And, and who test is the she it. that you are talking about? She. she. This mm. she. Yeah. Yeah. This she. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so it's too far away from her. Yeah. So there are uh, yes. there are uh, steps in between. Exactly. No, if if you look at innovation in that way, hey, it can also be a more messy of process. Of course. But, but there uh, are if you want to move in that direction, you need prototyping. You need steps in between. So w where does that? Do you do you now know where to go? I don't know. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, more here. Mm, not really. No. Usually I would expect you to be much more over there. But why? I'm, I'm desperate. Yeah, you could of course help her. But, yes, with because because I need her type. very much. Also. Yes, but, but I, I, you know, we already have windmills and we can also use them. So you should invest in me and, and just stay what we have and I will just, oh, you know, develop that, that for a little logic. bit. But I this feel is dumber and dumber. Of, uh, in, uh, Ma Fanda, are you? Are you a business That's angel? That's what, yeah. what he is trying to find out. Yes. Uh, are you? Uh, I like money. Yeah. You like <laughs> money? Okay, yes. there's uh, Rempo. If you can share <coughs> with Julian the microphone. Mm. Oh, no, you have and a I like the planet too. Uh, I like the planet too. No, yeah. I mean, I, I imagine uh, not being from engineering or scientist background that this happens all the time, right? This is normal <coughs> practice. This is how you develop uh, and implement research. But the question is, do we on what scale we want this, right? Yeah, because we are still talking about do we need growth or do we s uh, need to uh, the thing is I don't I fix I the size of the university no somewhere I like this. I may yeah. be underestimating our investor here. Maybe this is, we're talking about the next Elon Musk, could be. Um, mm. But I don't think this kind of investments will change the size of the university. So you'll have to go, and this is something we haven't discussed yet. We, need, we would probably need to talk about the administration of the university. About the, the administration, administration of the university. Why? Because th that's where these decisions get made. About and the question, w what kind of university do we want to be? N well, I, I wish, no, about uh, what kind of form growth is going to take, because growth is usually a given. It's just a matter of how we're going to grow. Yeah. So it's 
And, and what, we, what we are trying to explore here is whether growth needs to take the form of investing more in engineering or uh, investing more in vocational training, which could mean don't invest in uh, engineers at the TU Delft, but invest in uh, vocational schools like uh, the Haagse Hogeschool. Um, and, and we started with this because we were talking about the question why do we need this growth? The growth is justified uh, by, the, by pointing at we need these new engineers. And now we are talking about do we really need them or do we actually need other technicians? What yeah? kind of money are you spending? Public money or private money? Public money. So that is public. You are spending pu uh, public money. Uh, uh, yeah, I hear so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. That's very interesting. <laughs> That's interesting. Because I thought you are spending private money. Yeah, yeah you have these public-private partnerships. Uh, everything gets more uh, <laughs> interwoven <laughs> nowadays, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, but I, I also uh, look at the time, and I think that we are now not only talking about this university anymore, but also about what is uh, the, the, the role and uh, nature of innovation in our society, which is an interesting subject, but also... Uh, a broader subject for another uh, time. Uh, there was a, another, um, uh, another aspect that was mentioned a few times already was the personal, the personal contact, the personal uh, care and attention, and also uh, the well-being of students and the well-being of teachers. So that is a scene that we are now going to uh, play. Um, so, yeah. uh, Mark, maybe yeah. you can introduce uh, yourself yeah. briefly. I'm, I'm teaching at, uh, at the University of uh, Delft. So we all Technology have new University. roles now. Yeah. You are teaching. I'm teaching. Yeah. And uh, what is important to you in your in your teaching? Attention to the students. Attention to yeah, the students. Yeah, it's very important for me. Okay. That's why I took this profession. Okay. Yeah. To and learn Bar people Bartolain, something. you yeah. are. Uh, I'm a manager uh, at the university. I see a lot of possibilities, and I would really love to grow. And uh, Maaike, you are? I'm a, a student. Uh, I study here at the uh, University of Delft. And um, I'm concerned about the well-being. Uh, if we are getting more and more students here, will, yeah, will people still see us? OK, I will, we will uh, play this scene in the form of a carousel. So uh, each time the carousel uh, turns, you will see a different scene. So like this, you see a scene between the, 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 the education and manager and uh, the students, and if you uh, switch right, switch right, yeah, we can yeah, show yeah, it yeah, right, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> then uh, we see the teacher and the student. If we switch right another time, we see the manager and the teacher, and that's where we start. Ah, nice uh, to have you here in my office. Uh, yeah. I have this new idea. Oh I would no. like to do a pilot. Not again. I Yes, Not but this is pilot, really please. a brilliant idea. I'm, no, I'm really I sure of it. Now you have to, you have to look at the possibilities. I mean, I had this vision. I uh, see all these but students. Wait, 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 wait! My students are waiting for no, lessons. No, no, but They're listen. I want to. This is teach. going to help you. It's How? going to take away the pressure, and it's going to make life better for you. You know what I saw in my vision was that students are going to educate each other. I mean, it's brilliant. They can uh, explore these new uh, talents in themselves. Uh, yeah. You have to uh, get okay. more time okay. for your okay. uh, okay. research. Okay. So you who can finally publish, yes, uh, because I, I, I missed some. I you I didn't I publish yeah. anything. Uh, who is going to teach them to teach each other? How? Turn to the left. I'm so happy I finally f uh, could... Yeah, a life. You ha yes. I have your life. You're in 3D. Yes. Uh, f I, can, I, can, no. uh, I can smell... Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. I can smell you. I mean but uh, that's okay. okay. That's okay. Uh, that's, uh, you're no, a real uh, human. Boundary crossing. Yeah, boundary crossing. Yes. Sorry. Yes. That's, a, that's a black line. But I need, I, need, I need to talk to you in person because yeah. I, I, uh, I, I really I'm miss... You know, I... You yeah. just this whole new project about uh, co-students uh, uh, d d doing no. each other's reports. Yeah. I miss a senior who is re yeah. who really knows what he is talking yeah. about, and you know I'm yeah. really concerned about to the left. My left. <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, I see really a lot of potential in you. Did you know that you are really a talented student? Well. So you have been selected to my, you know, special pilot and you can teach other students all that knowledge that you already know. Oh no, I also have to teach? Do you already know the study load I Left. bear? 
Uh, Sorry, the yeah. pilot uh, didn't work. No. Oh, but that's there okay, was, because no, 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 I had this new vision. Uh, my I saw, God. Uh, I saw, you know, uh, that there are teachers from uh, a holiday destination teaching about the environment over there to uh, a, a green screen. And it's, you know, you're going to Hawaii mm. and you're going to teach over there so that you really can inspire Turn your students. Rights. I, I so how did it work out for you? Well I can see you're shining and you're you're looking happy. No, I feel so isolated now. I oh, that's I really nice because that's really a human emotion you're feeling right, right now. Right. right. I don't even know the differences <laughs> yeah. anymore. Welcome to our class again. Oh, oh yes, I'm 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 able now to give college again analog. Well, I'm not online. No, not nor and not because I'm an analog teacher. I'm so I'd happy like with you, you yeah. as an analog and teacher. You too, you too, you too. Yeah, thank you. Great, but you're here too. Yeah, but I also would like to talk okay, to you because I will um, uh, shut down the scene for uh, a little moment, and I would like to ask you to discuss with your neighbor. So. Uh, yeah. Because we are invited here on the growth yeah. of the university. Um, I appreciate the effort, how, the, how it is being presented here very much. But we are here to gather some knowledge on why it's grown, what's the impact on Dell. Yeah. That is why I'm here as a citizen of Dell to understand what is the impact. And it's now so. So this is. We are Okay, so you say that it should be more about the uh, impact of uh, of growth on the citizens of Delft. Yeah, I understand. Since you are uh, here representing, uh, yeah, uh, local residents, um, and we also uh, are going to uh, after this scene are going to. Uh, to play out a scene that is exploring the <coughs> dilemma of the impact on the local <coughs> residents. <coughs> yeah. Okay, I understand. But that there is there is also uh, impact on uh, on uh, people that are working or studying on the university. So that is what we are addressing in this scene. So uh, and and there are also people here that are uh, teaching or are uh, studying, and 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 are. Yeah, I think want to talk about uh, those impacts. So that is what we are focusing on now. And then uh, I can promise you that we also will talk about the impact on uh, the city after this uh, scene. Okay, um, so my question for you was, um, well, what is the impact on the well-being of the teachers and students? We, 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 we we portrayed here uh, a, 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 a little bit exaggerated situation as it is now, and then so what? So, uh, so we are not talking about uh, the growth scenario already, uh, but what kind of impacts do you see here? Uh, take a minute to discuss that with your neighbor. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a next question for you that you can continue to discuss uh, in pairs. How do you expect these impacts to change when uh, the university is uh, growing to 40,000 uh, students? So how do you expect the impacts that you have just discussed to change? Uh, please take another uh, minute to discuss how do you expect that to change? Is it going to be bigger or is it, uh, is it going to be resolved? What do you think? The impacts that you just discussed, if you did. Okay, thank you. I'm uh, moving a bit fast. I want to uh, get a few suggestions from you. Uh, in order to play out the next round, so what do you uh, to expect to happen? What, what, what did you discuss? We discussed that it would probably stay the same. 
It will stay the same. Yeah. Why? Yeah, so you say if you have the same the, the same number of uh, of managers and, and teachers, you will have the same issues. And um, what did you discuss? Yeah, so if everything grows, <laughs> the space, the people, then you don't notice uh, the change. And do you expect that to happen? Or what do you expect? It's difficult to find staff, so that will also probably be difficult in the future. Okay, Remco? Uh, I think in theory that this would work, but uh, I, I also think from practice, from practical observation, you'll see that there's disproportional growth in certain areas, and that's not among teaching staff. So you'll have more support staff and less teaching staff, in the end, decreasing the uh, the quality of, of uh, the teaching. Yeah. Okay. So we will uh, so we will look at another round of the carousel. Uh, Bartelijn, you will introduce the. Uh yeah. Right now, we 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 kind of o only talk about the. Um the teaching staff and their influence on yeah. student well-being, but there's way more than that because students also need a space, right? They need a space to live, they need a space uh, to do social things, for example, a student association. And right now there is not enough space for every student. There's not yeah. enough space in associations, in social life, for every student to do what they would like to do in their student life. Okay, so uh, we will take your comment on board as well. So in the next uh, round, you will introduce the expansion plans and uh, we will take on board these suggestions that there is, uh, that there is uh, a shortage of uh, staff and that there is also maybe more supporting staff than uh, teaching staff and that students <coughs> need a place. And now we move on and we'll come back to your uh, comment later. Okay, let's go. Um. No, but I would like to start with you. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. We're going to see each other. <coughs> so welcome in this uh, meeting. Uh, yeah, I'm afraid that you're the only teacher right now because uh, all the other uh, empty chairs are the vacancies because uh, we really would like to grow. Uh, and um, I first had this meeting with the uh, HR people and with the marketing people and with the concierge and because they already... Uh, are, are, you, are you okay? Because I need you, really, uh, I, I, I do need you, you know? Uh, but maybe this is a great idea to uh, teach uh, like this, because then it's going to be like a physical uh, teaching experience right. for... Help. Ja, je mag overeind. Well, you know, um, I just started my studies here and I now found a place somewhere in, in, in The Hague. And I, uh, but I, I, I don't know where all my fellow students live. I don't find any friends but, on but the street. But how is that possible? Because they're everywhere there are students. Yes, but there's no I space. I mean, in Delft, every, all the houses, every, overall, everywhere there are living students. Yes, but not me. And I cannot find a place to. to I, they, they didn't even have space for me anymore in the in the in the in the study groups in the in oh. the, the. Right. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm the. I'm quitting. Sorry. No, I'm you're the, the last. last to, yeah. The last physical. Oh, can I touch you one more time? I one know it's not appropriate, it's but. Not appropriate. I, I really. I, but for I just need to. Just one to the right. Okay. To the right. Oh no. You can't be quitting. You can't be quitting. You're yes. my only. Um, you're the last sorry, teacher yeah. standing. Uh, sorry. What am I supposed to do? Sorry. I only Maybe have all these staff people. Just try to teach something. So okay, can you let's teach uh, me something? <laughs> <laughs> no, she can't. <laughs> let's um, <laughs> let's focus on the the manager. What is the the, the what is the pressure on uh, the manager? Finding staff. And what are are her options in this expansion uh, scenario? Does she have options? The same amount of staff. <coughs> <coughs> the same amount of staff with more students. This, yeah, but yeah, <coughs> the same That's amount of staff. That's how I tried it. But uh, we saw how that ended. <laughs> uh, so what are other options? 
teach herself. Okay, yeah? Yeah. Uh, really concerned about the growth of universities. So maybe the, the developer can help to decide. Okay. So um, let's take that suggestion on board. We have the government here. Okay. The government of the Netherlands. So what what is the, the proposition of the government? You say the current government is concerned about the growth of universities. They want to decrease. They want to decrease and especially less international students. And, um, <coughs> and the plan here is still to expand because we need more and, and better engineers. Okay. Yeah, sorry. We're going to decrease. You oh can't but increase. But, but last meeting we talked about the ranking and mm -hmm. I thought we both agreed that it's uh, in importance for yeah. the Netherlands that we have a great ranking in our university. So I think we really yeah. need all those, yeah. you know, those but global we can't students we to can't come here. Manage, we can't manage, and you can't manage. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But th that's, that's, a, that's, that's a pity. It? Uh, yeah. All, all those sorry. years of work yeah. in, in our, yeah, that's our great decision, university. Decision I mean made. You know, I, I, um, I hear there's a lot of talking about money and numbers, but did you ever think about talking about feelings, about well-being, about, yeah. they say, students is the, be uh, is the best time of your life? Yeah, I think quality is very important and, and tension in teaching. Not, uh, no, I'm, I'm not talking about teaching, I'm talking about well-being. No. I'm talking about psychological, yeah. emotional yeah. well-being. Yeah, the housing is a big problem. Not only the housing. Yeah. You're right. I mean, in, in uh, a few, uh, the, the Delft's Blau was important for Delft. And now it's going to be the Delft mindset. You know, I see like Musea, it's going to be a touristic export product. I mean, I think everybody of, uh, on the whole of the planet would like to come to Delft to experience yeah, the Delft's to mindset. No. <laughs> the mayor of Delft is also involved. Yeah. And what is the position of the mayor of Delft? Well, she uh, gets more and more students, including the Christian University. And she has to take care of the numbers of students. And she is the mayor yeah. of the University. So it's very curious. I, I, I can be the, the mayor. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Um, it's good that I see you. Because um, as a mayor, my first responsibility is the, the security, you know? the safety of the city and I know uh, those students they are lovely they are very intelligent but they also like to party a lot and I get a lot of a sense that uh, some citizens they don't feel so safe anymore so what can you do to make uh, uh, those students behave better that's basically my question uh, well that's a good question in Delft we love good questions so I really yeah uh, want to compliment your mindset Thank I think you. it's really Delft, uh, Delft yeah, orientated. Um, and I think that's why we need all those engineering to answer the good questions you're, you're, you're yeah, coming yes, up with. Yes, but you, don't, uh, you should not only engineer here in your laboratory, you should use your senses, you should look and you should talk and you should listen and you should uh, grab them in their necks sometimes and say, It's Come a great down. possibility to become a diverse city. Okay. We are uh, the mayor of Delft is here, and uh, I think this is a good moment to go uh, to. Uh, yeah. This we have been here for an hour and a half. Yeah. And we've been invited. We have our tickets. We come to this about this university, and everything has been an intern thing. Yeah. Okay. So okay, now let's. Okay. Wait. Uh, wait. Yeah. And we people from Delft have another issue. In fact that only for the last 20 minutes we get to say something, undescribes exactly how we feel and exactly how important the people of Delft are. Because you keep on talking about um, everything in turn, very interesting, but the fact that we're sitting here yeah. as citizens of Delft and don't get to say anything and don't, are, are not involved, just watching three actors, it is fine, 
but it understands exactly what position the Dutch, the, the Dutch people have. Yeah, comparison to and the I can, exactly. it describes exactly the position that... So uh, can I interrupt because you both speak in a reform, like you are the only ones here, but actually there are teachers here, there are students here, this is a public event, we all can attend, and I think no, it's in your it's tone, the last it's acting real minutes. disrespectful, no, but you were, you were actually a lot of here already making some uh, disturbance, but please be respectful. Really disturbance? Oh, yeah, really and nice. my, if it's acting tone, exactly. Acting. Exactly. Here, yeah, but you said, "Man, I'm not the only one here. I feel it in the whole atmosphere, and I really have to come up, and stood up for this." So, my so why were people from Delft invited, anyways? It's a public event; everyone can attend. So please be open to other other positions and other comments, and not talk in the we form because you too is not we. Yeah. Okay. Um, so um, what I see. There are uh, different people here with different perspectives, and that is uh, that is also what we uh, <coughs> what we try to do is to create uh, a space for these different mm. perspectives on uh, several issues. And indeed, we've talked about uh, the, the 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 identity of the university together with Remco. We talked about the internal dynamic, and I. I think that you are right that you express that there are different people here, but you are also right that you say we come here because we have a problem. We have an issue with this. Yeah, so let's... Uh, yeah, so, um, and I can also see that this is upsetting you. Okay, then I misjudged uh, uh, that. Um, <laughs> and um, I would like to su suggest that we then now move on to actually talk about this issue, uh, um, yeah, if that is okay. So, um, uh, uh, Bartelijn, you are a local resident. So let's uh, hear from you. What are what is her experience? Her experience is that everybody who lives in Delft loves Delft, and we like to be with students. The students are a part of Delft. I live next to a student house, big house. So it's, you know, for 55 years, I never had problems. But I do know there's a lot of nuisance in the city. There's a lot of nuisance, nuisance in the city. In the city. Yeah. And we cannot ignore it. And as I said, we're not tilting the position right now that the pressure of the university is getting too big for the city. Yeah. So uh, residents love the city, also love students as part of that city, but there is also nuisance. And can you describe what that nuisance uh, is about? Yeah, so the biorhythms uh, differ, so the uh, getting up and going to sleep is different. What else? Screaming and, and uh, drunk uh, uh, students in the street. Yeah. Yesterday we were talking about the OV way, we are in a, in a special group to um, talk with students about this special week. Yeah. Okay, so we also have a, 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 a student uh, that, that, that maybe one. May one, yeah, you look old, but <coughs> you can, you can the play the young. Yes. Um, so maybe a student that you described, a student that is uh, a nuisance, but also has a, maybe has a, yeah, uh, also has a drive to, to, to do what uh, he does. So what is this uh, student about? What does this uh, student want in his time here in Delft? Study hard, work hard, <coughs> but also play hard. So the student wants <coughs> to have a student wants to learn. Yeah. The student wants to be wants to be educated, but the student also wants to have a good time. Yeah, so wants to wants to learn yeah. to be educated and have a good time. And in addition to that is that also the student, just like the resident, wants to have a bit of rest in his day. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes you need to rest. And then there are also other students that are not a nuisance, like the people that live next to you. And what are they about? Huh? Can you describe that? They're friendly students. They 
Yeah. But it happens. I mean, that's not a problem, but the moment it gets too much, the pressure gets too much, and a bigger, a bigger university will, will um, yeah. increase the, uh, the, the level of uh, pressure. Okay, let's first uh, start this uh, last uh, scene about the, uh, yeah, the, the, in the relation between the students and uh, the city. Uh, with a uh, yeah, scene in which de these uh, characters share their experience. I work very hard, I study very hard, night and day, and sometimes I need to relax. <sighs> I'm just a person, I'm just a student. Everyone has been young, so why bothering? Why bothering? <sighs> How can you ask that question? I mean, I think it's so... Oh, I, I, I really get bothered about that question. I mean, I live in Delft for many years and I love Delft. I love the I little love canals. Delft. But there are some students and they're just like, you know, at, at 6 a.m. in the morning, they're screaming, they're, they're, they're vomiting yeah, yeah, in yeah. the streets. It's, I mean, it, it's, you it's not nice. You can text me. You can text me. You know my number. You, know my you can always text me if you feel I am a nuisance. But luckily... I am not a nuisance because, you know, my mom, she gave me a very good uh, education and she said, always be friendly to your neighbor. So I am, you know, I try to clean up after every party and I know we, we should not uh, make the volume too loud. I think it's normal to, you know, <laughs> say hi to each other. Uh, I think it's normal to say hi to each other. I just have really nice neighbors. I greet them. I say hello. But I think I, we have to be honest as a city. And it's getting a problem if there are going to be more students. It's not okay. And the problem is that I think that nobody is listening to what I'm saying. I mean... But nobody uh, is listening to what I am saying. Nobody is listening to what I'm saying because I try to keep silent because I think it's better not to raise my voice. I, I think I it's necessary that I raise my voice because the plans are already made. I mean, the, 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 the board of the TU Delft already have the plans. They know that they're go they're going, they're, there is going to be growth. Yeah, but, but the growth, it can't, uh, there are, uh, there was no problem when I was the only one, the only house with students in our street. Now there are four houses with students. They make a lot of noise. Let me make some noise. Sometimes okay. I feel uh, embarrassed. So um, what? <coughs> So these perspectives and desires are clearly different. So how, uh, how could uh, a city and a university uh, deal with these different uh, desires? Martin. Um, well, one idea is of course the multi-campus strategy that we have been talking about. So, I mean, I've heard you talk about a, a decrease of students in Delft to 25,000. Uh, do you know about the multi-campus strategy? Of course I know. But this is what the university says. They want to have 28,000. They put a, a, you know, there was a new column in the newspaper where they said, they have an ambition of 42,000. That upset all the Delft people. And then we heard that that's not the ambition. The ambition is they cannot, um, they have to go. So that's fine with me, but they also they talk about work and they said yeah so decrease here and increase in Rotterdam yes so yeah, but I live in Rotterdam and I, I, I you know I don't like it if there are going to be d that much students in Rotterdam I mean there are going to be more and more students in my city more I and love more city. I love Rotterdam but but if there are going to be too much si students then it's not going to be livable for me anymore I'd rather live in Delft because then I can bike to the university and I feel more at home in the place where I study. <coughs> I think I'm going to move to Rode School and then work online. In Groningen? And party in Rode School. Oh, <laughs> please do that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I think. Okay, so what, uh, what are... Um, hey, you were just representing the, the, the student's perspective. What, 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 uh, what do you think? How, sh how should uh, a city and the university deal with these differences? Yeah, it's difficult because personally I think studying in Delft or in each other city is more than just an academic program. It's also the connection you have to the city, the closeness to the university, to student associations. It's a whole package. So uh, there was one student saying, yeah, I like to live in the city and 
can go by buying the material. I think that's very important to have that as an experience and not traveling two hours from your parents uh, and stay at a friend's couch during an uh, exam week or something. It's the whole package. Yeah. So it's in the interest of students to have the whole package, not only the academic, but also the social uh, and the program and the uh, lived experience of studying <coughs> in the city. <coughs> but then how, uh, how should, uh, what should that look like? What, what is a, a reasonable or responsible way of living together in this city? 25,000 would be a good idea. <laughs> yeah, you will settle for 25,000? Rob Mudde is yeah the second man of the TU Delft. Yeah, so only moving the housing to the campus is not going to uh, work out. So it needs <coughs> you. You need a a limit. That was that's those were his words. Yeah, Julian. Yeah, I would like to add to the discussion here that what we have seen in the past few years is that the the problem is not only that you have two kinds of students because you don't have two kinds of students. You just have a student and he wants to live his life. Yeah. And he wants to to educate. But the 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 problem is the friction between the the residents and the students and exactly what was being talked about earlier that there is a difference in biorhythm. But there's not only a difference in biorhythm, because that would work if the housing they are living in would be good, would be appropriate. But what has happened in the past years, and that's maybe I would like to add that yeah. over here, is the investor. Yeah. Now, a lot of uh, places have been bought up and uh, a lot of students put in a, lot, a tiny amount of space without the isolation that is needed for sound. So therefore, when you have friends over, it's very easy to have 10 people in the room. R also residents have parties. They have 10 people in the room. But if you live between a thin sheet of, of a paper wall, the, your neighbors, of course, will hear yeah. all, of the, all of it. So maybe that can be added to the... Yes, I'm throwing a theme party, and the theme is whisper. So I put this little measure uh, to, to measure the decibels, and we are only allowed to, s s to really whisper. And then everybody has to take off his shoes and walk on his socks. And we will have a great mime party. I'm yeah, really so my forward. neighbor had this whisper party. Well, it started really nice, but after two beers, well, nobody was whispering anymore. Well, I shouted, whisper, please, but yeah, they wouldn't listen. I heard all night, whisper, please. Well, I say isolation. Yes. Okay, yes, so Julian, you say it's clearly a bigger uh, problem. Not only, it's not only about, about residents and students, but it's also about the economy of the city and uh, real estate. The, the, if you want to expand as a university, you also need to understand that you need to facilitate the place where these students <coughs> stay. It's not only the housing, it's <coughs> not only uh, the supermarkets, but also the places where maybe one uh, sometimes they go for have a drink, they go have a eat. All of these facilities need to be there. And the, if the university just only looks within their own box and saying, we are going to expand, without thinking about the impact that you have of all of the surroundings and not talking with all of the different parties about how can we solve this future pr problem, then in my opinion, it's not possible for the university to grow if those facilities are not there. So, um, yeah, you wanted to share something? Yeah, um, I think one thing that is being missed here is that... It's one thing that is missed? Yeah, a student is a student. Also, also to get drunk, also <laughs> to get drunk too. Um, so the thing is, I mean, what then what is the, uh, so you say, let's not talk only about students. Apparently there's another. <laughs> yeah, that was also. So we can't understand, I think. Yeah. So I will. Um, can you repeat? Uh, I feel what like there is a tension between the residents and the student 
Whereas this student is just someone here who enrolled in university, came here to study, and is doing all the normal things that everyone gets, I guess, more so people get drunk, never, doesn't matter if they're already working or a student. But well, something that has been missed here, as if it is the fault of the student that residents are not having a great time, whereas actually other people decide how many students are coming here, and therefore there yeah. are that many students here. So I see this tension between as if it is our fault that yeah. all of this is happening. <laughs> and so not I think the what we are uh, trying to do is exp exploring the issue. Uh, so we've, saw, we've seen uh, students in this scene behave in a certain way. Uh, and you uh, rightfully say it's not only the, the, the whole responsibility is not on the students. This is uh, there are decision makers that decided about the number and that also increases perhaps uh, the level of nuisance. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, I think that is uh, it is also important to yeah, look at how that responsibility can be shared amongst uh, the different. Um, actors that are and decision makers that are involved. Um, uh, so I would like to uh, use your uh, comment to go uh, to the, yeah, the, the, the end of this, uh, of this event. And uh, Leon, can you uh, tell me there are, one of the things that are happening now is that there are working uh, groups that um, and these working groups, they are going to uh, yeah, think and talk more about the potential and implications of these plans. So what are uh, three main working groups related to the themes that we've discussed today? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know it by heart. <laughs> but is there one on housing and on... Uh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, so on the facilities, but also on uh, the, uh, the areas of research that you should um, yeah. expand in. Yeah, those two. Sorry. So yeah, so education. there's one on research. There's one on housing. There's one on education. Education. Research. Innovation. <laughs> innovation. Uh, and is there also a HR working and uh, locations? Is there also a working group uh, about relation to the city? And local residents? Yes, locations is about that. Locations is about that. Okay. Um, what I would like to do to finish this, uh, because it's, it's, uh, almo it's uh, yeah, almost time and uh, people are leaving, need to leave already, um, to br discuss for one uh, final minute with your neighbor uh, what you would like to, uh, one recommendation in one sentence that you would like to give to those uh, working groups, whether they are on research, on education, on locations and relations to the city, or anything else. Uh, and then I will, uh, I will uh, catch a few of your uh, recommendations and uh, close. So uh, one minute with your neighbor, what is listening to all these voices the most important recommendation for you. Uh, which is going down, uh, you are more or less done. So uh, let's hear a few, starting with you. What did you talk about? Just uh, one recommendation. In brief, yeah, no, we don't have time to share the microphone across, so just shout out your recommendation, please. Uh, be aware of the time between the multi campuses, I realized, and uh, what's happening now. So, yeah, so there's a lot of time between now and and potential then a, then realization of these multi-campuses. Yeah, then, uh, then there's an issue with the staff, with the, 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 with the, the, the people living in the city, and that yeah. should be solved too. Okay, thank you. And uh, you in red and... 
Um, well, I think maybe also is visible here, maybe also more engagement between students and citizens, that it's not them, students first as citizens, but that it, we need to do it together here in Delft. And for example, if you make multi-campuses, you prevent that from happening, because then the students are somewhere and the citizens are there, but there's no engagement and then you get a, a lot of problems, I think. Yeah, okay, so engagement between and not opposition. You agree with that? That's great. Yeah. The inventor? I, I think that for none of the problems we heard, growing is a solution. So there's also an option to say, we are not going to grow. Uh, forget, don't forget in your working groups that if the, you are not obliged to come with a solution for growth, if it's not possible, it's not possible. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm an educator here. I'm teacher. So we were asked as teachers, can we do that? At the moment, we already have high work pressure. There are not coming more teachers, so we only see the work pressure come up, quality go down. So the teachers say, we don't want it. So take our advice. So growth is not a solution for the problems that we have talked about. Um, you in black. Um, we were discussing from different perspectives. Yeah, uh, hold the microphone a little bit closer. Uh, sorry. Uh, well, we were just uh, underlining the fact that there is kind of tension <laughs> as we noticed in the moment so the university itself in its environment already now should be aware of that okay thank you um can i ask you yeah. um, what would be your recommendation it is uh, taking uh, uh, people serious and uh, taking factual information and consider with those facts uh, and not underestimate um, what is being said. So take yeah. Do not underestimate others. what is said, take people seriously. Yeah. And also the facts that they share about how they, what they experience. Can I ask you, we already saw the disruptive innovator next to you, but what is... Uh I'm not sure what we really discussed, but I think um, <laughs> we have to focus on quantity instead of quality. Uh, Quality instead of quantity. Quality of instead of quantity <laughs> instead of quality. Okay, thank you. And then uh, here. Sure. Uh, look, look at what type of student you want to create. They are the future. Look at... What type of student you want to create because they are the future. Look at what type of students you want to create. They are the future. Okay, I think um, this is a beautiful uh, drawer. picture to end our oh. part, but... The drawer, yes, I know the drawer. <laughs> there has been uh, somebody over there that has uh, been very active drawing this uh, rich discussion and all the different voices. So I would like to uh, ask you to show, just give us a, a sneak preview, come here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what, uh, yeah, if you want, and then I will uh, hold this. I'll give a very brief Do I need to recap. hold it like this? You've been yeah, listening so long. Before I entered, I started drawing because I read the, the, the title, the Colossal Campus, and I thought, what could it mean? So this is a huge library. It's 500 meters high. So this is pretty colossal. But it can yeah. even be larger. Yeah, can I? <laughs> it can even be larger. Here you can see it from space. Ah. And here the whole Earth is one campus. But then your session started, now you can turn it if you like. Yeah. And during the discussion, I noticed that the problem to grow is kind of colossal. So the, 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 the we have a kind of colossal problem if we just do it. And I started listening and listening. And if you can perhaps stand here, then everybody yeah. hopefully can see it. We'll scan it also, so you can take a look at it later on. So what I noticed, that there was a lot of arguing and thinking about definitions. So I build it up from here. This says society needs growth. And there were discussions, yeah, about what sort of society are we talking? Is this Dutch society, European, global society? What sort of needs are, uh, do we have? I mean, do we need uh, research engineers or do we uh, need uh, applicable engineers who, uh, who do practical work? And then the question about growth, what is growing? Growth can be in size, but it can also be in age, like lifelong learning. It can also be growth in knowledge, for instance. So uh, I think there was a lot of yeah, discussion about, about what sort of growth are we talking. And then about the size, what I noticed, if you grow in size, there are a lot of, uh, which I can understand very well, uh, negative side effects where you should be careful about. Friction is one between students and locals, between teachers, academic, uh, academics and uh, students, but also uh, 
the space. I think this is a very big issue. Like here, there are too many uh, students in Delft. It gets uh, top heavy and people almost fall down. Uh, it's also about well-being. So all these side effects, they are so important. And if you ignore them, it will definitely uh, yeah, kind of go wrong. I think that was also mentioned at the first session when you were standing here. Uh, this was mentioned, Delft uh, getting top heavy. And also a big part of the discussion was that I think most people agreed that it's very important to be independent, uh, to be a creation of uh, knowledge. So these were some keywords that I uh, emphasized in the drawing. Wow, a lot of beautiful work. Big hand. Um, and then that is the uh, end of this event, but hopefully not the end of the dialogue about the future of this university in this city. Uh, let's thank our panelists, uh, Remco, Julian, Martin and Claudia. <laughs> and our actors, Mark, Bartelijn and Maaike. My name is Frank Kupper. Thank you for staying with us and uh, participating in this dialogue and uh, good luck in the future here. So thank you and good night.